I'm so glad that you've chosen to join us as we talk about engaging your personal calling. And today, if you don't remember anything else, I want you to remember that you are called. I know for me growing up, I used to think that there were certain people that had special parts in God's plan. Uh, and then other people were just kind of supposed to live regular lives and, and not mess up too bad, <laughs> you know, not, not cause an embarrassment or do the really bad sins. And then there were certain people that God invited to join him in something more than that. But as I read scripture, I see that it's the people that say they want to be with God. They want to be close to God that then he invites them and gives them a greater calling. You look at Samuel. Um, Samuel is serving the Lord, but he's not just doing things for him and then going to bed and hanging out. He's not just going and then off playing with his friends. When we read in 1 Samuel 3 about Samuel, when God talks to him, he is laying next to the Ark of the Covenant. So Samuel, in his free time, is getting as close to God as he possibly can. He wants to be with God. And he is so committed to God that he enjoys even spending his free time with him. You see this too in the life of David. David has no idea that he's going to be king. He doesn't think that's going to be happening. But he's out in the fields with the sheep, making up songs about God. He's singing to God by himself, praising the Lord. Some of the Psalms were written during this time before Jesus, before Jesus had called David at all, when he was just watching sheep. You see this too in the life of the founding prophet of the Seventh-day Adventist church, Ellen White. She wasn't just doing a regular nine to five job, hanging out, and then God calls her and she's like, oh, I, God, I haven't really been paying much attention to you, but sure, I'll do this. No, she had been in her free time going and seeking God, going to the meetings where people were talking about God, being around people that loved God. When she had her first vision, it was after she had gone over to a friend's house so that they could pray together. They had been praying for two hours and then she had her first vision. So it wasn't like she was watching TV one afternoon and then a vision came or, you know, she was working at the 7-Eleven and the vision came. No, she had already decided to seek God. And then as she came close to him, he invited her to the next stage of her calling. And so for each of you listening, the first step in following Jesus and in finding out what your calling is, is to say yes to the calling that Jesus has for everybody. Come, follow me. Be my disciple. And if you say yes to that, everything else will be taken care of. You know, if you say yes to that commitment and say, okay, Jesus, the rest of my life, it's yours. And wh whatever else happens, I'm with you. I'm committed to your ways and walking obedience to what you have for me. If you say yes to that today, you'll find that the specifics of God, what is your will in this moment, become less and less of a problem because God is walking with you every step of the way. And as you're walking with him, he reveals what's next. I think the problem people make is they don't ask God for help. They don't ask God, what's your will? until they have a huge decision. It's like, God, I haven't talked to you for years, but should I marry this girl? <laughs> you know, or, or God, uh, what major should I choose in college? I know, I know I don't really go to church. Uh, I don't pray at all. I don't, I don't spend time with you during a, during the day, but, but what major do you want me to have? See who you marry, uh, what major you have, where you live. None of those things matter unless you've committed your life to Jesus, unless you've said the big yes of, I want to be your disciple and I want to follow you for the rest of the days of my life. And if you say yes to that, everything else becomes clear. I've got a little graph here that kind of, uh, it's called a calling pyramid. 
and it shows the different levels of calling that God has for us. You see, first, we're, we're made in God's image, and the calling is to be in Christ, to be his disciple, and this is for everybody. Then, from that, there's a broad personal mission. This is rooted in your personality, background, and experience. You see, God doesn't want you to be somebody else. He created you intentionally. So for who you are, for what you enjoy, what would that look like fully dedicated to Jesus? You see, Jesus isn't going to have you do something that you hate doing. <laughs> you know, like he's going to have you enjoying walking with him, enjoying doing that ministry. Do you think if you would have talked to any of the disciples that were with Jesus, that if you would have asked them, hey, what, what about being a carpenter? Did you ever think about that? Like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, I, I get to be with Jesus. And that option is available for you too. You get to choose, okay, Jesus, I want to be with you. And then he comes to you and says, okay, what are your passions? Who are you? What would that look like in my service? And the two of you get to dream together. And sometimes he'll invite you into the next step. Sometimes as you're faithful, he'll ask you to do greater things. But the biggest thing is just being exactly who you are devoted to God. The next, after this broad personal mission, for, for example, my personal mission is to live a life of faith, hope, and love modeled after Jesus while awakening those around me to the life and calling he has for them. And I'm going to be doing this regardless of what my job title is, regardless of who's paying me, who's sending me money. That's going to be what I'm doing for the rest of my life. But then after that, come long-term particular callings. This is your marriage partner, your career path, what degree program you have. And so for me, I'm a pastor. I've gotten a theology major. I've gotten my master's. I'm in the process of getting my doctorate. But it's all just particular things along this path of fulfilling my personal mission. Then there are short-term particulars, like, like what house you should get, where you should live, uh, job offers, things like that. And then from that, there are minute by minute particular callings. For example, you're in your process, you're in your job, and God will tell you, hey, go and pray for Jim. You know, go, that, that man over there needs your help. Go and help him. And there'll be these minute by minute callings that the Holy Spirit asks you to partner with God in specific times and specific places. And so these are the ways that you can be connecting with God. And these are the different levels of what your calling is. So today, uh, our time's almost up, but I have three steps for you, just practical steps to take in fulfilling your calling today. First, have you committed to Jesus? Because if you haven't committed to Jesus, uh, man, he's not going to help you find a woman or a man. Like, what, what, you think he's going to give you a godly spouse when you haven't decided if you're going to be godly yet? No. You know, like he, he doesn't want to set this person up for failure. He doesn't want to have them be connected to somebody who isn't committed to him. So the first step is saying, God, I'm committing to you. And then he'll help you find someone else who's committed as well, whose callings are similar. Next, have you been discipled? If you're, you've said yes to Jesus, have you ever been actually come together with somebody and had them teach you the ways of Jesus. Doing devotions together, praying together, doing ministry together, praying for other people together. Somebody walking and working with you for the kingdom of God. That's the next step. Find a Christian leader that you respect and say, can I come alongside you in your ministry? Would you be willing to disciple me? And finally, what are your strengths, passions, and experiences that give life? So what are the things you enjoy doing? What are the things you're excited about? 
What are the things that you come alive doing? Then say, what would it look like for me to do those things with Jesus? You know, we, we have the Holy Spirit. And, and if we ask, the Holy Spirit will be, live inside of us and go with us throughout the day. And so all we need to do is just do the things that we love doing with God's presence, partnering with God. And this can look like anything, man, half the time where Jesus is doing ministry, he's at parties. He's just eating with somebody. He hasn't said, Oh, I'm going to do a ministry Sabbath. No, he says, I'm going to go have lunch. And he ends up changing somebody's life. He says, I'm going to go to the grocery store. And along the way, he stops and talks to somebody and their life has changed. You see, the particulars of your life, where you live, what job you have, those things are much less important than going with God in the journey. So my prayer for you is that wherever you go, you would go with God. That you would decide if Jesus is trustworthy. And then once you've found out that he is, commit the rest of your life to following him and just enjoying the experiences and these amazing things that he has in store for you. My name is Caleb Henry, and I'm just going to pray for you that God would guide you in this. Lord, you see us before you. You know our hearts. God, we give you our lives. From this moment on, we say that you have control. You can lead us and guide us in the way we should go. You can counsel us and show us what is in our hearts and what needs to change. We give you access to our life, Holy Spirit. So I thank you, God, and I pray that you would bless and lead all the people who are watching today. I thank you and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. What's going on, my Redwood family? This is Pastor Doug, and I serve down at the Redwood Youth Department. And this year is a little different, obviously. Even though we can't be together in the same place, and even though we can't touch, we can still be in touch and fulfill the mission of this church. So this year we are talking about embracing your call. And my youth, my people, the ones that we've been getting to know for the past three years, all of you guys has different and amazing and awesome talents that a lot of people are probably saying, use those talents to embrace your call and make some money. Hey, if you're good at art, be an artist. If you can stomach blood, be a doctor. If you're great at geometry, uh, why don't you be a, an architect? There are a lot of things that people might tell you to do this and use it as your calling and make some money out of it. And I know all you guys will have doors that will open up for you and you will be awesome people in this world that will change this world. So I want to just remind you to embrace your call to love, to love the same way that Jesus loved, to love the same way that we see him reflect the character of the father in the Bible. For 1 John chapter 4, verse 19 says, we love him because he first loved us. He has given us the example of how to love. And not just kind of like a, a peace and love type of love where it's just all hugs and kisses and, and everything is peaceful and hippie vans out in the mountains. That's the cop out kind of love. That's the easy love. I'm talking about the real kind of love. The one that we see Jesus show us in his examples. The one that gets down and dirty with people. The one that comes alongside of people, regardless of how different they may believe, regardless of how different their race may be, regardless of just how different they are from your life, gets down and rubs shoulders with people and empathizes with them, listens to their story. And even if they don't understand, they want to try to understand a different perspective. This is the kind of love that leaves someone off better than when you first met them. This is the kind of love that knows that you too also have something to learn from everyone that you meet. This is the kind of love that Jesus has shown us. So I hope that you embrace your calling, regardless of what you become, whether a CEO, a doctor, a teacher, or a car salesman, whatever it is that you end up doing in your life, I hope that you may embrace the calling to love the person in front of you, regardless of race, regardless of religion. 
regardless of what they have gone through in their past, that you may love them and empathize with them and journey with them. And through those actions of love, through you embodying Jesus, they may one day want to know more about the Savior, the Savior that you know, the Savior that has first loved you and filled you with love. So my family, I just hope that this next school year and this next year, whatever you do, you may just embrace your calling to love all those that are in front of you. Because the law, the prophets, the whole Bible hangs on this one thing, love. Love for God and love for your neighbor. So love the same way Jesus has first loved us. And I can't wait until we get back together again in person to show some real love to each other. For we miss you guys. Much love, everybody. Have a blessed, blessed summer. Hi, Board of Camp Meeting. My name is Kenzie Hardy. I am one of the admissions counselors here at Pacific Union College. And um, I'm really excited to be connecting with you virtually uh, for Camp Meeting. Um, I was asked to share an experience that I had while I was in college that um, kind of helped me learn more about my spiritual growth or um, grow um, closer to God. Um, and kind of related to the theme of camp meeting, which is finding your calling. I think it's a fantastic theme. Um, I firmly believe that you and I and every person in this world was created with a unique set of talents and passions and things you're naturally good at that can be used not only for a career or for relating to people, and but also to further the gospel, to help people in need um, and to be happy and to be fulfilled in a way that nothing that this world offers you can. Uh, the experience I want to share is something that happened while I was a student missionary in Madagascar. I was there uh, for 10 months between my sophomore and junior year of college. And um, about halfway through, I was feeling really um, disillusioned or, or sad and disappointed with a lot of things. I uh, was not sure what I wanted to do with my life. I was missing home and, and feeling kind of lonely um, over there. And so I was compelled to go out for a run and I've always kind of enjoyed the outdoors. Um, I specifically have always liked climbing trees. Um, and so I, that morning I climbed a tree, uh, I was at the very top where you could feel the wind moving and I felt compelled to, you know, start praying and sharing my heart with God. Um, something that I had had a hard time doing before. And at that moment I felt really connected. I felt, I don't sing, but I, I started kind of singing a prayer and, uh, you know, I even, I even started crying, just kind of releasing all those emotions that I had been feeling for a little bit. Um, not too long after, I remember just feeling kind of embraced as I was hugging the tree up there, um, just kind of noticing how the sky was set up that day, how uh, other trees around me, nature, I just felt um, like God was really close to me that morning. And I hadn't realized it, but that nature is a way that I connect to God. And um, something I recently kind of connected the dots with was this book. It's called Sacred Pathways. It's uh, by Gary Thomas. And the whole gist of the book is that just in the same way that we have different personality types and different like love languages and all that stuff, we also have, uh, there's nine different ways and he calls them sacred pathways, but um, the way to explain it is ways that you love God and connect to him, that you feel closest to him. And so um, that's when I discovered that I connect to God and love him by being outdoors and kind of being in his book of nature and just kind of remembering the creation that he made. Um, but other people might feel closer to him through the senses. Some people um, might feel that way by doing things that are ritualistic, like, you know, communion or symbolic, you know, the, the symbol of the cross, the symbol, that kind of thing. Some people find him and connect with him better in simplicity and solitude. Uh, some people do that through being being an activist and being very like hands on with issues within our, our communities or within our church or issues within our society and helping others um, kind of standing up for them. Um, other people connect best to God and, and feel like they can love him most by loving others and helping others that are in need. Um, some people do that through celebration. Some people do that through adora adoration. You know, music is a big one for people. Uh, some people do it in an intellectual way and, and loving God through their minds and learning more about the specific, um, you know, parts of the Bible or words that learn by, by learning Hebrew and connecting through the original language. So I hope this very short um, just thought helps you and inspires you and, and challenges you to try to find out what way you connect best to God. It's it's innate in you. You already know which which ways you connect, but to pursue um, 
uh, devotionals and to pursue growth in that way that you connect best to God. And it's just reassuring to know that um, not everyone's going to feel connected, most connected to God by doing devotions in the morning at six in the morning. You know, I've always struggled with that. I'm not a morning person, but I, it's reassuring to know that in the way that God created me very uniquely, he also provided a path for me to get to know him better and to grow through him. And so that's my challenge and my thought and God bless you all. Happy evening, friends. Did I ever tell you about the time when there was a huge animal in my truck with me and I didn't know it? Well, bear with me if I have, because one day I got in my truck and I started it up and I began to drive through the college campus. I was a college student at the time. So I'm obviously gonna be driving a little bit slowly until I pull onto the main road. And while I'm driving slowly, I felt something run across my ankles, kind of heavy-ish. I didn't know what it was until I looked down. And when I looked down at my feet, there was nothing there. And so I just kept on driving and driving until suddenly I felt something push against the back of my heels. And then I looked down again, and this time I saw a tail, the tail of an animal. The animal was underneath the bench seat of my truck, and its tail was coming out from under the truck and pushing against the back of my heels. And yes, it was very disturbing, and it was very frightening. And so what did I do? I pushed in the clutch. I put the vehicle in neutral and the truck continued to roll. I pulled the e-brake, which didn't work very well. So it was still rolling, but starting to slow down. And I opened the door to my truck and I jumped out. It's exactly what I did. True story. So <clears throat> with that, I bet you're wondering what the moral of the story is. The moral of the story is, well, I don't know if there's much of a moral to this story, but I will tell you that in my teenage years and even into my young adult years, I had this feeling that if God knew the junk that is in my heart, if he knew the skeletons in my closet, you know, just the how sinful and unworthy I am of his calling, that he would want nothing to do with me because God has billions of people in this world. Surely there are better options than me. Well, we do know that God wants to call anybody and everybody, but I still couldn't quite get that through my thick skull. This passage that I want to share with you helped me with that. And I'm reading in Revelation chapter 3, starting in verse 13. And it's Jesus speaking. And it says, I know your deeds. And if that's not the scariest thing, I don't know what is. You know, it's kind of like um, ha realizing that you have people coming over, stopping for a surprise visit when you didn't clean your house. In fact, your house is filthy and they're about to come through the door and see just how bad it is and realize that really you're a slob. OK, I don't know if you've ever felt that before, but it's kind of a similar relative feeling to the idea of Jesus wanting to or, or the idea of Jesus coming into my heart and just seeing that it's a mess. And I always thought to myself, maybe if I can get myself reasonably cleaned up, have my act reasonably together, that that then then I could consider asking Jesus into my heart or maybe Jesus might consider calling me or having something to do with me. I know your deeds. Oh, well that settles it. He already knows my deeds. He knows the junk of my heart. Here's his description of me as well. Um, that I am miserable or wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. That's the end of verse 17 of Revelation 3. And then after all that and going on with a little bit of the description and maybe even giving some advice, dropping down to verse 20, Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him 
and will dine with him and he with me. In other words, Jesus is saying, look, I know you're junk, but I'm still standing here. And I'm still knocking on the door of your heart. I know it's in there and I still want to come in. Uh, your Savior loves you. And here, here's also what he has to say. He says, he who, who overcomes, I will grant him to sit down with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. And what does overcoming look like? Well, I just described it. If you simply hear my voice and open the door, get over your embarrassment of all the junk in your heart. He's your heavenly father. He knows you inside and out. He knows the junk in there. He's, if he was afraid, he would do what I did. <laughs> you know, what I think, what I would imagine him to do is like, whoa, this place is a mess. This is a disaster. You know, neutral, e-break and jump out. But that's not what Jesus does. He says, I know the junk. I know that there's creatures crawling all around or whatever in your heart. The description of absolute filth. And yet he's still standing there wanting to come in. Engaging your call, calling today, friends, I would suggest, uh, requires you to get over possibly the humiliation and the embarrassment of Jesus, discovering what's really in your heart. Because the truth is he already knows and he wants to come in anyway. God bless you all. I hope this message uh, speaks to your heart and gives you confidence to let Jesus in. Hey guys, my name is Angel Castillo and I am an admissions counselor for Pacific Union College. Um, I guess we're speaking about our callings from God and kind of our story, how we got there. Um, and for me, ever since I think I was in high school, I noticed I loved talking. I would get in trouble doing that in class and just in school because I loved connecting with people. Um, and I talked a little bit too much in class, but I knew it was something that I loved doing. Um, and I, I said talking, but the deeper level be beneath that is connecting with people. I loved making connections, making friends, um, and not just acquaintances and simple friends, but deep connections with people being able to find things in common with people and have deeper discussions about life and things that you agree on and disagree on and just discussions in general. And so I knew I wanted to take this kind of passion in me and apply it to everything I did. Um, and it was even nicer when I was able to help people with it. And so I finished high school and I got to college and I noticed everything I was doing, whether it was in a classroom or an extracurricular event for like a student association or club, I wanted to get to know people. That was a driving passion. I wanted to get to know, know more people and whatever I was doing, if that brought me to more people and gave me more opportunities to connect with them better, I loved doing it. Um, and so I felt that passion since high school from the beginning there that that's what I wanted to do. And so while I was in college, I considered a few degrees. I started with education. I wanted to be a teacher. Then I moved over to theology and I ended up just deciding on communications. Um, and that was kind of maybe the root of where my passion came from. You know, I loved talking. And so I went with communications. It just kind of made sense. But I realized communications was a bigger field. It wasn't just about talking, but about messages and what those things mean. Um, but my two passions in college and educationally before that were studying to be a teacher or a pastor. And I realized, though, connecting with people and communicating them were something I definitely wanted to do. The two before were also something as well, being a teacher to younger people and being in ministry as a pastor or maybe not even as a pastor. So now that I graduated and I have my communications degree, I realized it didn't matter where I was doing it, how I was doing it, but I wanted to talk to other people about Jesus or about his mission. It didn't have to be direct where I was up in front of a pulpit giving a sermon and talking about the life of Jesus. It could have been just one on one talking to someone about life, maybe where they want to go to college um, and then be able to eventually talk about God in some way and put that into there to show them God's guiding you in whatever part of life you're in. Um, and so I realized, again, whatever it is I was doing, I wanted Jesus to be there. And so I started to put that into everything in my life. It wasn't just my job that I'm doing now. Um, it was in every little connection I made, every friend I made, every every travel I went on. Everything on my social media, posting on Instagram, on Facebook, everything I did, I realized I can connect with people and then show them God. 
And I realized a different passion rose within me even stronger, that ministry one. It grew because I realized I found myself closest to God. And this is my, my personal thing. I found myself closest to God when I was sharing about him, when I was telling people more deeper and meaningful moments I had with God and giving my testimony in that way. Sometimes it was just hearing others' testimony and then empathizing with them. But I realized talking, communicating, connecting with people about God made me feel closer to him. So now I had these two things. I loved connecting with people. I loved being able to share God. And I wanted to do that in everything I did. And so it brings me to where I'm at now. I'm still an admissions counselor at PUC, and I love being able to visit high school students or at different camp meetings, such as this virtual one we're doing now, um, or even throughout the year, different leadership retreats, different things we do with younger people to be able to teach them, to be able to connect with them and bring them to God. And I know God has a lot of other plans for me in life. I currently don't know where that is, but I don't have a fear that it's not going to come. I know he's opened doors for me. And so I just know I have to keep pursuing those passions, keep following God's light, have faith that he's going to find me more positions, more opportunities to connect with people and more opportunities to show other people his light and his love, because that's just how beautiful he is. He'll grant you your deepest desires. Just follow him and seek him first before anything else. That's my message. Hey, everybody. It's me, Pastor Jesse. And I have been working with the Redwood Youth team for about five years. And I really miss seeing you guys, having you all join us at Redwood Camp Meeting this summer. But uh, at least we get to be online a little bit. And maybe we'll see you at our, our Zoom session we'll have. All right, so I am currently the pastor the youth pastor at the Fairmont Church in Lodi. But I will be starting in August, just a couple weeks, I will be the pastor at the Rio Lindo Academy Church. So maybe some of you watching this will get to spend some time with me in the next couple years when you're at Rio Lindo Academy. I want to share a little bit about uh, how I've experienced um, God's calling and how I think you can be experiencing God's calling as well. So I have lived quite a few places at this point in my life. Um, I grew up in Massachusetts. I went to school in Tennessee and in Michigan. I've served as a missionary in a couple different places. And now I'm working and living here in California. And through all of this, I believe that God has been leading in my life. When I look back on, on some of the changes that I've made in my life and, and moving to different places and doing different things, I believe these changes are God leading in my life. And let's be honest, um, change isn't easy. Change isn't easy. Like right now, right now, we are experiencing the change of having camp meeting online, right? And it's not easy. It's, it's not quite what we would want it to be. You probably experienced some change at the end of this school year, right? Um, where classes started to meet online and not in person. You know that change is not always easy. But one of the things that I've seen in how God works through people is that usually usually when he calls someone to do something he's calling them to make a change he's calling them to make a change in their own life so then they can make changes in other people's lives changes for the better right and i believe when we when we choose to follow God's leading in our lives, when we choose to answer his calling he puts on our heart, it will lead us to have to make some changes. And it's not always easy. Following God's leading in your life is like a roller coaster. It has ups, it has downs. It's all over the place sometimes. But it's always exciting. It's always exciting. 
You might never know what's coming around the next bend, but you know it's going to be exciting because that is what God wants for you. I've experienced that in my life, and I'm experiencing that right now in this opportunity to connect with you online. It, right now, as I'm planning how I'm going to be moving to Real Endo Academy, I am so excited about the changes that God is bringing in my life. It's not easy, sure, but it definitely has potential to be a lot of fun. And I want to encourage you that when you feel like God is calling you to do something, and maybe you get nervous about what God's calling you to do because it's going to change the way your life has been. That's probably going to be the case. But it doesn't have to be bad. Change won't necessarily be easy, but it can be great. You can have some of the greatest experiences in your life because you're trying something new. You're doing something with God that you've never tried before. Sometimes you'll fail, but sometimes God will work through you to do some incredible things. When you think about how to engage your calling, how to engage the calling that God has placed on your life, I don't want you to be afraid of change because change is how God works through people. Dear God, I want to lift up the young people that are, that are watching this video right now. I ask that, that when you make a call in their hearts, that they will find courage in knowing that you will be with them wherever you lead them that the kinds of things you're asking them to do might be new and different and maybe a little bit scary. But God, I ask that they will know that you will be there the whole time because you are calling them to make a change in the world for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Hello all, and thank you for watching this 2020 virtual Redwood Area Camp Meeting video. We are striving to reach the needed YouTube subscriptions so that we can change the name to something a human would understand. Please visit the website for what is coming up. Don't forget to sign up for announcements on the website. Please consider helping us with our budget needs for this year so we can be ready for camp next year. Please keep our camp in your prayers as we traverse these trying times. We can always use your help at the camp if you want to come and put your skills to use once again. Thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to getting together again in 2021.